Hello class! Today we are going to look at aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So we previously talked about photosynthesis and cellular respiration and in cellular respiration there were three major steps glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain also known as ETC. Now some of these steps are anaerobic and some of these steps are aerobic. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about what anaerobic and aerobic mean. So anaerobic means it's the process that requires no oxygen. And aerobic is the process that does require oxygen. And a good way to remember this is the N for anaerobic is N for no oxygen. So let's focus on a little more about cellular respiration, anaerobic and aerobic respiration. Now the overall equation of cellular respiration are glucose and oxygen are our inputs and carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of ATP are our outputs. Glycolysis is the process where um, it could occur without oxygen, so it's typically anaerobic. And then the Krebs cycle and ETC are both aerobic. Now we know that aerobic respiration requires oxygen and takes in both oxygen and glucose to make the end product of ATP. However, anaerobic does not require oxygen. Um, glycolysis is anaerobic and in anaerobic respiration since it doesn't have that oxygen to create ATP cells have to find this other way to make ATP and this other way is called fermentation and we're going to look at how muscle cells during strenuous activity run out of oxygen and use fermentation to produce ATP. So fermentation, like we said, is the process of producing ATP when oxygen is not available. And there are two types of fermentation, lactic acid and alcoholic fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation is the process by which our muscle cells deal with the two pyruvate that are made during glycolysis um, in the anaerobic respiration process. So they take these pyruvate mo molecules and turn them into lactic acid. Now normally those pyruvate molecules would just go into the mitochondrion and produce ATP during aerobic respiration. But since we don't have oxygen, they turn into lactic acid which is what we build up in our muscles when we're doing a lot of strenuous activity and not having enough oxygen. An example of that could be when you're opening and closing your fist, you're making a fist as fast as you can for 30 seconds, and then you rest for 10, and you do it again and over and over and over and over and over and over until your arm starts to get really tired that's when it starts to produce lactic acid. So these muscle cells are still needing energy, so they perform glycolysis in anaerobic respiration, turning it into lactic acid through the lactic acid fermentation process. So basically, for the overall process of lactic acid, it's the breakdown of a glucose molecule Glycolysis occurs first, followed by lactic acid fermentation to make lactic acid. Um, we don't need to know this huge formula. We just need to know that it occurs without oxygen and it's breaking down glucose to make lactic acid. So let's do a little check for understanding, see if we have this down. Why do our muscle cells sometimes turn to lactic acid fermentation? That's correct. It's D. They don't receive enough oxygen during strenuous activity. Very good. Now what about alcoholic fermentation? Let's go ahead and talk a, a little bit about that. 
So think about the holes in bread. Does anybody know where those come from? Holes are caused by the yeast in the bread. They go through this process called alcoholic fermentation. Alcohol fermentation is an anaerobic process that is performed by yeast where simple sugars like glucose or fructose are converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide. And again, the main purpose of this is to produce ATP. So when yeast and bread dough runs out of oxygen, it goes through alcoholic fermentation, producing carbon dioxide. And then these, car this, these carbon dioxide bubbles create little spaces in the dough and causes it to rise and have those little holes. So basically, yeast are producing a gas. Yes, they are farting. Some examples of alcoholic fermentation are beer, wine, bread like we talked about, yogurt, pickles, and there's tons of other more. Here's a chart to help you compare the two processes of fermentation. This is one type of model that shows you both lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. Can you see some of the differences in each? Now let's do another little check for understanding. What are the products of alcoholic fermentation? Now remember what products are. Are they the inputs or the outputs? Very good. It's A, ethanol and carbon dioxide.